It is 7 a.m. on a Monday and therefore it is time to briefly talk about composition and arrangement. The terms composition and arrangement are often used interchangeably. Practically, composition is simply deciding where the notes go and on which instruments. I consider composition to have two main parts, the how and the why. The how of composition is music theory, understanding keys and chord progressions, developing melodies and harmonies that work within those keys and chord progressions, developing rhythm and beats within tempos and time signatures, deciding on instrumentation, that is, what notes go on which instruments, as well as more high-level strategic stuff, like deciding what structure your song should have or what sections it should have. For example, verses, choruses, refrains, bridges, solos, as well as classical forms such as the sonata. And yet, this is not a music theory course. As a matter of fact, I am not formally educated in music. Everything that I know is haphazardly assembled from little bits and pieces of knowledge I pick up, and I really don't think I have the systematic grounding to give you a good introduction to music theory. So if you want to learn about music theory, you're going to have to consult other learning resources. Okay, so music theory is the how of composition. The why of composition mainly for me involves thinking about composition as musical storytelling. No different than when you're writing a fictional story, you think about things like tension and release, controlling the energy levels in the story, building and subverting or fulfilling expectations, making sure to keep things interesting for the reader or the listener throughout and making sure that the most important elements, plot points, or in this case, instruments, such as the vocals, are intelligible. In particular, repetition is a very important element in musical storytelling. Most often, repetition can create expectations which can then be subverted or fulfilled. But it's easier to understand this stuff when you're looking at an example. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the solo section of my cover of Sinking Ships. And instead of having me talk over the song, we're going to have text on the screen explaining some of my compositional choices. Next, let's take a look at Ivor Merkton off the A Safe and Effective Heartswarming album. This example in particular is to help you understand all the different instruments that go into a particular part. Thank you. 
Okay, I know there wasn't a lot of information here, and I basically that's because I don't feel like I can adequately cover composition in this series. In my view, in order to get good at composition, you need two things. Firstly, you need the theoretical knowledge so you can place things in key, or you can at least know when a note is in key or out of key. You also need musical vocabulary, and therefore you need to study a lot of different music using the techniques described in the listening and research sections. In particular, it's important for you to be able to identify chords when you hear them and figure out how they feel. Figure out how certain keys or key modulations and chord progressions feel. Uh, figuring out how certain rhythms feel. Looking at the why of composition, you need to look at what are the clever things that the composer does, for example, to control tension and release or to ensure that the most important parts of the instrumentation stand out. Why did the composer choose to put a sound in a particular place? There isn't always a good answer to these questions. Sometimes composers just put things in because they feel like it. But sometimes when asking these questions, you can notice something important. That concludes the composition and arrangement section. Remember, Ivor Meriton is not just horse dewormer.